Kermit Brandt from the Kellogg Foundation um, in the late 1980s, and one of the opportunities I had was to travel to South Africa. Not only was it one of the most beautiful spots in the world I'd ever seen, but the people were incredibly proud people. I learned so much more from the people I met and talked with, and um, I was so taken by that experience, I thought, I really want to learn more. I was invited back um, the following year to teach in South Africa for three weeks and while I was there I said you know I really would love to bring my students and one of the people who I was teaching with, a professor, invited uh, me to look about seriously bringing a group of students back. In May of 2008, Westchester University Honors College students traveled to the University of Pretoria. One of the interesting pieces of our trip was to go visit the University of Pretoria and there we met with I'd say about 20 uh, students from their seminary school and it was a very interesting experience because it was people from all of not just South Africa but also neighboring countries like Zimbabwe and Zaire were also there. One of the coolest things I remember is that um, if you guys all know about the, uh, the Soweto riots and Soweto is a I'd say it was a good hour drive away from Pretoria but the, many of the students that were in Pretoria had never been outside the walls of their specific city, especially outside the walls of Pretoria, and they had never been to a historical site you know, that was so vital to their country's history, like Soweto. And us taking them there, it was their first time to go. And just to, to hear their experiences and be there when they first walked into where the riots were, where the race, you know, where the killings happened that day, it was, it was very eye-opening because they learned something about their history. To really have them come together and go with us and experience that together, it was, a really, it was a really good learning experience. While at the university, some Westchester students formed long-lasting friendships with the students they met. The best part of the 2008 South Africa trip for me was getting to meet with the University of Pretoria students. We got to spend uh, about two days with them, and the first day there, I met a man named Nigel Chikanya, who's actually from Zimbabwe, even though he goes to school at the University of Pretoria. Okay, my name is Nigel <laughs> Chikanya. I'm being second year theology. I'm from Zimbabwe. I love my country. <laughs> so the first night in South Africa that we met the university students, we were able to have a big night where we all got together. And that was the first time we bonded, and we bonded immediately. And once I came back from the trip, me and Nigel started an email relationship. Every week we sent each other emails. And in June, a month later, Zimbabwe had a huge um, economic and political crisis and some of Nigel's family members were beaten in the streets for their political views. And I knew then for the first time that that bond I had formed was going to be a lasting one and that I was meant to meet Nigel so that I could help him and his family and others in Zimbabwe. None of this would have been possible if I hadn't gone to South Africa, if I hadn't met Nigel and shared that experience. It just completely changed my life. This life-changing visit was a memorable experience for all who took part. In May of 2010, Westchester students hoped to travel back to South Africa and pick up where they left off, changing lives and forming lifelong friendships. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa.